Hello, today we are going to be talking about the runs test, a statistical test which determines whether the results of a repeated process with two possible outcomes is independent of the previous one. We are going to test, um, illustrate this test by flipping a coin 30 times. The results of the test, this test will determine if the previous results of flipping the coin is independent, therefore showing whether it's unbiased and random. Firstly, we need to make a hypothesis. The null hypothesis is going to be tossing a coin is independent from the previous toss. This is what we would expect to happen. The alternative hypothesis is tossing a coin is not independent from the previous toss. Firstly, we're going to carry out flipping a coin 30 times. This is a fair coin, tails on this side, heads on this side. Heads. Tails. N1 represents all of the positive outcomes and N2 represents all of the negative outcomes. In this case, we will select heads as positive, although you can pick either. Therefore, our results show N1 equals 14 and N2 equals 16. The next thing we need is the expected value and the variance of R. R is the number of runs, which is the number of consecutive sequences of N1 or N2. In this case, we have 19 runs. The expected value is the value you expect R to be. So in this case, 2 times N1 times N2 over N1 plus N2 and then plus 1 to that value. The variance of R measures how far a set of numbers are spread out. So in this case, 2 times N1 times N2 open brackets, 2 times N1 times N2 minus n1 minus n2, close brackets, all over, open brackets, n1 plus n2, close brackets, squared, times, open brackets, n1 plus n2, minus 1, close brackets. The values for the expected value of R was 15.93, 15.93, Variance of R is 7.17. We then square root this to get 2.68. Next, we work out the region of acceptance which is the expected value of R minus 1.96 times the variance, square root of variance of R, which is smaller than or equal to R, which is smaller than or equal to the expected value of R, plus 1.96 times the square root of the variance of R. <coughs> we get the value of 1.96 since our alpha level is 0.05, then that's the 95% confidence interval, which we divide by 2 and find 1.6 by some of these values into the dead table. Since our alpha value is 0.05, we divide this by 2 and deduct this from 1. Therefore finding 0 0.9750 on the table. As you can see, if you go across the table, you get the value of 1.9 and as you go to the top, you get 0 0.06. Adding these two values together gives us 1.96. In a statistical test, a 95% significant level is standard. This means that we can be 95% confident that our results are true. Next, we actually have to sub in, in our values to the region of acceptance. This gives us 15.93 minus, open brackets, 1.96 times 2.68. 
close brackets, is smaller than or equal to R, which is smaller than or equal to 15.93. Plus 1.96 times 2.68. This gives 10.6772, which is smaller than or equal to R, which is smaller than or equal to 21. 0.1828 Since our value is R, this lies between the region of acceptance. So, yeah, since 19 lies between the value, there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, toss in a kind is independent from the previous toss. In non-mathematical terms, our coin was not biased and the result of the flip of the coin had nothing to do with the previous result and therefore random. Now we're going to show you a real runs test. R, which again is smaller than or equal to 21. Now I'm going to show you a real runs test. Three, two, three.